Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Detroit welcomes the World Heritage Air Museum. A 350-1000 wing goes into production. Could hydrogen-powered aircraft be in our future? I'm Brie Cross, it is August 21st, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The World Heritage Air Museum announced the opening of its new headquarters and flight operations based at a renovated hangar at Michigan's Oakland County International Airport in Detroit. The hangar will be home to several rare vintage jets. Visitors can get an up-close view and learn more about the aircraft and the roles they played in history. According to the museum board member and jet owner pilot Tom Proctor, quote, we are thrilled to have this new space to expand the mission of this museum at Oakland County International Airport. These rare jets are truly spectacular, and we hope to be able to continue to expand our fleet as well as encourage aviation interest in today's youth." End quote. The mission of World Heritage Air Museum is to rescue military jet aircraft from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, return them to flight status, and then use them to encourage the youth of America to dream, wonder, and soar. The current collection of jets originated from around the world, including Britain, Switzerland, Czechoslovakia, Spain, France, Russia, and Poland. The wings for the first Airbus A350-1000 have begun the process of assembly at Broughton, North Wales. The A350-1000 wing has the same span as the A350-900 that is already in service, but 90% of the parts have been modified and the trailing edge has been extended to resize the wing for the additional payload and range. According to Airbus, the A350 XWB wing is the largest single part made from a carbon fiber composite material in use in civil aviation today. Airbus claims the high performance wings of the A350 XWB make the aircraft faster, more efficient, and quieter. The wing design includes several streamlined features. Among these are droop nose leading edge devices and new adaptive dropped hinge flaps, which increase the jetliner's efficiency at low speeds. To improve efficiency at higher speeds, the A350XWB can deflect its wing flaps differentially, optimizing the wing profile and providing better load control. After the break, hydrogen fuel cell powers an aircraft for the first time. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. A group of researchers at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at American University of Sharha in the UAE recently conducted the first hydrogen fuel cell-powered unmanned aerial vehicle flight in the Middle East. The fuel cell-powered flight took place in the United Arab Emirates and Gulf Cooperation Council regions. It's reported the plane cruised comfortably during a flight duration of approximately 10 minutes, powered only by a proton exchange membrane hydrogen fuel cell. The team will now look to pursue further tests related to payload capacity, endurance, and the ability to fly autonomously. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has just awarded a patent to Airbus for a hypersonic passenger plane. The jet is designed to utilize rocket engines to propel to supersonic speeds, where hydrogen-powered wing-mounted ramjets would engage to propel the jets to its destination. The Santa Barbara, California-based alternative energy company Hypersolar said that there is great potential for hydrogen power in the aviation industry. 
It's Friday, and that means that it's usually time for ANN CEO and editor in chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. However, this week, Jim is out of the office, way out of the office, on the other side of the country, working on an amazing ANN project. If things go as planned, our bet is Jim will have a lot to say on his barnstorming commentary next week about what type of new adventure he's on. We also understand he's taking the opportunity to fly a couple of new airplanes. And let's face it, why would you stay in the office when you could go flying? After these messages, airline passenger loads expected to increase over Labor Day. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at aspenavionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. According to data released by the organizations Airlines for America, over 14 million people will fly over this Labor Day holiday period. A4A says airlines are ready for the uptick in passengers and they are adding capacity. Recommendations for Heathrow Airport expansion continue to unravel as Gatwick officials point out what appears to be errors in traffic estimates. It appears forecasted traffic growth at Heathrow does not seem possible when combined with proposed rules to ban night flights. A group of aerospace and aviation experts met in Kansas City to create global training standards for technicians and other industry workers. Called the ASTM F46 Committee, the group aims to create consensus-driven standards to help workers gain skills that adapt to new technologies. A long-term agreement between the Peel Group and Liverpool John Lennon Airport Slenders will underpin a major investment in the airport over the next five years. The new arrangement will further support air performance as well as its future growth. Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe has named 19 members to the state's Unmanned Systems Commission. Virginia is home to the eighth largest concentration of unmanned system firms in the nation at a time when the use of unmanned systems is rapidly expanding. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Here is a notice of importance for operators of the Pratt & Whitney V2500 engines. The FAA has issued a safety alert for operators, advising owners, operators, repair facilities, and maintenance technicians to an important situation regarding overhauled fan blades. It has been found that several airworthiness approval tags were issued, indicating that V2500 fan blades were properly overhauled. However, these fan blades may not meet the blade repair limits for sidewall thickness. The safety alert includes a table that identifies the affected fan blades. All owners, operators, repair facilities, and maintenance technicians who purchased V2500 fan blades should ensure all required inspections, including blade wall thickness inspection, are performed in accordance with the V2500 engine manual. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network. 
the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you on Monday.